Hey everyone, Bob Roberts here. I'm the Vice President of Engineering and Service Delivery here at Highwire. Hey, I've been getting a lot of emails lately, um, obviously with crowd, the whole CrowdStrike outage going on. We're not a CrowdStrike shop, but a lot of folks have been asking me, you know, we know that we're running on Sentinel-1 or we're thinking about Sentinel-1, um, you know, why does this not happen to Sentinel-1? Can't happen to Sentinel-1? You know, usually when it comes to applications, I would say there's no such thing as a for sure not gonna fail application. Anybody can say they tested something and it rolls out and it still is a problem. Uh, anybody who says that uh, they'll never have a problem with software, uh, you, you should look at them with, uh, with gleaming eyes, uh, asking them, are you really sure about that? Um, however, in this case, Sentinel-1 actually architecturally runs different than CrowdStrike. And so when Sentinel-1 comes out, uh, which they did yesterday, and says, hey, listen, this can't happen to us because we work different. I want to explain why that is. And it really comes down to, it's like the Lord of the Rings, the power, the, the power of the ring to rule them all, one ring to rule them all. And it really comes down to that. So the Microsoft operating system has what's called two operating system rings. So you have a, a, an inner ring uh, called ring zero, and that's your kernel ring, otherwise known as your system mode. And then you have ring one, and ring one is your user mode. That's where all your applications typically sit. Now, the reason why that's important is the, the, the ring zero, the, the kernel mode, is where just the operating, sits, operating system sits. You have things like device drivers that will tie into it. But other than that, really, it's really a small segment of what's running on your computer. And it's done that on purpose because if anything happens, if that kernel sees anything going on that it doesn't trust, it automatically scrams itself. Um, thus the famous blue screen of death. And so that blue screen of death is very much on purpose. You want that blue screen of death. You don't want it on 100 million devices all at the same time, but you as an individual, when you get that blue screen of death, that is there on purpose to save you. It's there to save you from something happening in the system that could corrupt files, it could corrupt your system so you could reboot it, never get it back. It's really the system's way of having a fail safe. Um, you know, and oh, by the way, Linux has one, it's the black screen of death, and if you're running on a Mac, you, you know, you get these two, it's called the pink screen of death. Um, however, Macs, I will say, don't let a lot of things into its kernel. And so one of the problems here that caused this CrowdStrike issue is that they have certified drivers that talk directly to the kernel. The problem is, is that CrowdStrike, in my personal opinion, they kind of cheat the system in a little bit. So because everybody's trying to do zero day threats, they can't get all of their drivers recertified every time they push out a new file. And so what they do is they, they have a folder with their configuration, um, files that sit on top of that certified driver. The certified driver goes and gets those files. And it tells the, it tells the driver what to do, and that driver then communicates that to the kernel. Problem with that is those files that are in that folder are not certified. Um, if they were, it would take Microsoft days or weeks. I don't know how long it would take them, but it wouldn't be immediate, that's for sure. And so, so if you're a company that's trying to protect against zero day threats, you can't do that um, because you, you know, the amount of time it takes to certify for Microsoft, even if they had you know, a, an agreement with Microsoft to do it as quick as possible, it's not gonna be immediate. So, because Microsoft has to make sure anything certified is protecting the system. So long story short, um, they have these files and that caused this issue instead of CrowdStrike went to the kernel. The kernel said, hey, I don't know what's going on and I'm shutting down because I wanna protect everything else on this computer. Um, let me know when, you know, go into safe mode where they only have their, their system running, their system files running and the device drivers don't load, you know, the CrowdStrike you know, files don't load. So you figure it out, fix it, and then try to reboot into regular mode um, and then we'll try again, right? So that's what caused the issue. Now, Sentinel-1 doesn't have that same issue. They can't have the same issue. They can have an issue where they try to push something out quick and causes a problem and crashes, but it would only crash the Sentinel-1 application. It would only crash the agent. It would not crash the system um, because it doesn't tie in to that kernel. It doesn't tie into ring zero. So that is fundamentally a different issue. Um, now, what's really important is, I, you know, which I always say it this way, 
because I don't want to be anti crowd strike. I'm not a troll for anti, you know, I'm not a troll for against crowd strike. You know, everybody has their reason. Crowd strike is, I think, something like 16% of the market. I think Microsoft is like 40% of the mar market with uh, Defender. Um, so they're a big piece out there. Obviously, we're seeing that with all the crashes that happened and the impact. Um, but unless they actually change their architecture, this could happen again. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to say go to Sentinel One because I'm trying to scare you. But it could happen again. CrowdStrike will have to change the way that they roll these files out and have them not integrate into the kernel. They're going to have to go to more of a Sentinel One style where they sit the whole thing on top of Ring One, which is the user mode. So if they have a problem in the future, it will just crash CrowdStrike. It won't crash the whole server. Uh, your IT staff ain't going to like it because they still have to go and fix all the agents uh, and roll an update out to all the agents. But you're not going to have a situation like you had a couple of days ago. So anyways, I hope that that answers the reason of why Sentinel-1, the way that the architecture is designed differently, will protect your system against um, having the type of outage that you saw with CrowdStrike. I hope that's helpful to everybody. If you have any questions, please reach out to our SOC. The number's down below. Um, if you want to hear more about our, offer, our offerings, please reach out to us. You can reach out to sales at highwirenetworks.com. Again, I'm not out here trying to shill uh, for S1, trying to get people to be scared of CrowdStrike and come over to us. But I got so many questions about, you know, can this happen to us um, being an S1 shop? I wanted to get you that answer. Hope that helps everybody. Until then, we'll see you guys later. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.